This video is part of the series on a first course in modelling analysis and control and here we look at an introduction to using Laplace for solving ODEs. Core skills then, we need to learn about what's the Laplace of a derivative and how do we use these to solve ODEs. And a reminder that Laplace is a tool to support analysis of system behaviours and we really want you to be familiar with this tool and how to use it. So Laplace transforms of derivatives. Signals arise from model behaviours, but models include derivatives. So we need to know how do we handle derivatives with Laplace. Again, we're not going to give a der derivation here because this is a brief video, but those are available in the further resources. Laplace of derivatives. So we're only going to give the first, second and third order derivatives because the higher orders will be obvious from the pattern, but will rarely come up. And we start with the assumption that the Laplace of a signal x of t is given by x of s. So therefore, the Laplace of dx dt is defined like this. s x of s minus x of 0. The Laplace of the second derivative d2x dt squared is defined like this, s squared x of s minus s x of 0 minus x dot of 0. And Laplace of the third derivative, s cubed x of s minus s squared x of 0 minus s x dot of 0 minus x double dot of 0. Now, once we move to feedback systems and transfer functions, which we'll do in a week or so, the initial conditions will be ignored. So you can see we've got lots of initial conditions here and they tend to make these definitions quite messy. But in the long term, we're going to be ignoring those. And therefore, what you'll see is that differentiation becomes equivalent to multiplication by s. So my original transform was x of s. If I differentiate, I get s x of s. If I differentiate twice, I get s squared. If I differentiate three times, I get s cubed, and so on. Solving ODEs with Laplace then. We've got a simple process. First, take Laplace of every term in the ODE. Second, rearrange to separate out the signal Laplace transform. And third, do inverse Laplace to solve for the signal. So here's an example. The speed of an aircraft is given by the following model. Okay, you'll see it's a first order ODE. Use Laplace methods to determine the speed as a function of time given initial speed of 50 meters per second. So the first thing we do is take Laplace of every term in the equation. So you see I've said take Laplace of 10 to the 5 dv dt plus 500 v, take Laplace of the right hand side. So I do that and you can see I get 10 to the 5 s plus 500 times v of s minus 10 to the 5 v of 0 equals 105,000 divided by s. Next, what I'm going to do is rearrange to extract this v. So if I do that, you see I get this here. That v equals 105,000 over s times 10 to the 5 s plus 500 plus 10 to the 5 v of 0 over 10 to the 5 s plus 500. Now I can get rid of some of these large numbers and simplify that, which is what I've done here. And then finally, I use my table of Latrus transforms <coughs> to find the solution. So I first do my partial fraction expansion, which you see I've done here, into terms that I recognize. And once I've done my partial fraction expansion, I can identify the core terms. And if you don't remember your partial fraction expansion, look at the video on inverse Laplace. Another example then, solve the following ODE. And here, we're just going to re-emphasize the steps. So step one, take Laplace of every term. So Laplace of this term corresponds to this. Laplace of this term corresponds to this. And Laplace of this term corresponds to this. So you can see the process. Simply take Laplace transforms of every term. Second, solve for w of s. So I'm simply going to rearrange it and extract the w's. And when I do that, you'll see I end up with this expression here. That w equals 5 over s times 3s plus 4 plus 6 
over 3s plus 4. Now, you can always pause the video if you want to look at those steps a bit more slowly. And finally, do inverse Laplace to find W of t. So you need to look at your inverse Laplace resources if this has gone too quick, but you'll see when I do the partial fraction expansion, this is what I get. And once I've got that partial fraction expansion, doing the inverse Laplace is by inspection. And again, if these steps are too fast, just pause the video and look at the steps a bit more slowly. Example two. So this is exactly the same as the previous one. The only difference is I've made the right hand side slightly messier. So first, take Laplace of every term. So the four dy dt, if I take Laplace of that, I get those. The y corresponds to that. And the e to the minus t corresponds to that. Next, solve for y of s. So basically, I rearrange this expression to extract y on its own. And you see, this is what I get here. The y of s is 0 0.25 of s plus 1, s plus 0 0.25 minus 1 of s plus 0 0.25. And then I need to do inverse Laplace, which requires a partial fraction expansion. So I do my partial fraction expansion and I get these terms here. And then I look up in the table to find the corresponding time domain signals. Now again, I re-emphasize, I'm not doing these steps slowly. If you want to go through the steps slowly, pause the video, get a piece of paper, and try it. Example three. I've made this one a bit more complicated because now it's a second order ODE. But the steps are exactly the same. So first, take Laplace of every term. So you can see the double derivative. There's the Laplace of the double derivative. The single derivative. There's the Laplace of the single derivative. And the 3y goes here and the 2 goes to 2 over s. So the first step, take Laplace of every term in the equation. Then rearrange it to extract the y. So I've done that and you can see I now end up with this term here that y equals 2 over s, s plus 1 times s plus 3 minus s plus 4 over s plus 1, s plus 3. Now, if it's not entirely obvious, this term on the right, this s plus 4 over s plus 1, s plus 3, which comes from here, has come from the initial conditions. Now, in the longer term, we won't bother with initial conditions, and so the answer will come out somewhat simpler. And then the final steps, do your partial fraction expansion. And you see here, I'm not bothering with that detail because that's for another resource. And the key thing is you understand the step. So there's the conceptual step, do your partial fraction expansion. And once you've got that, you can extract your signal y of t as a e to the minus t plus b e to the minus 3t plus c. And you'll see we've admitted computations of a, b and c as straightforward. What happens if you have quadratic factors? So here, we're asking you to solve this ODE, ODE, and you see I've made the initial condition zero to make life a little bit simpler. So again, the first thing, take Laplace transforms of every term in the equation, and then separate out the x of s. And you'll see this is what you get. x of s is 3 over s squared plus 2s plus 4 times s. And you'll remember from the video on inverse Laplace, that what you want to do is look at this quadratic factor and say, well, how does that look in my table of transforms? So I can see I've got an s plus 1 squared plus a root 3 squared. OK, so I put it in the expected structure with quadratic factors. And then when I do my partial fraction expansion, you see I'm giving I'm saying I need an a over s plus a b root 3. That's going to be the sine term plus a c times s plus 1. That's going to be the cosine term. So I can use the cover-up rule to find a, so you'll find very quickly that a is 0 0.75, and then I'm going to have to do a long-winded way, which you will have done in your mathematics modules in the past, to find the other coefficients b and c. So the algebra is here. Pause the video if you want to go through that more slowly. And once I've got the a, b and c coefficients, I then finish my inverse Laplace from the table. Some conclusions then. This video has given a brief summary of using Laplace transforms to solve ODEs. So three steps are taken. Take Laplace of every term, rearrange to extract the transform of the core variable, and then do 
a standard inverse Laplace process. Now in this video we've done the partial fraction expansion fully although we've not dwelt on actually calculating the residues and we've included initial conditions okay as we move on to feedback which we're going to do in a week or two neither of those steps are going to be necessary so the tedious parts are going to be avoided and I'm sure you'll be pleased about that and the normal reminder keep up with your quizzes and tutorial sheets to make sure that you can actually do it by yourself and bring any questions to your contact sessions.